All right, thank you for staying with the day break. We're still talking about the tax burden and the conversation was even going on during the break. My all panelists are here now. Reginald Kazutu, economist with Amana Capital, is joining us on Skype from Mombasa. CPA Edwin Makori, CEO ASPAC, is also here with us. Thank you for making time. And FCPA Philip Muema, managing partner Anderson Tax. Thank you for making time. And be the Muema economist and CEO in Falebo Group is with me. CPA Makori, before you walked in, we were just wondering, why are we worse off now? Or are we worse off now? I mean, from the conversation that was going on, we are worse off. Yeah. And why we're saying this is because COVID-19 had an impact on us, yeah. which we cannot be able to uh, share from it and uh, wish it away. Yeah. One, we have job losses that we need to be able to be cognizant of and properly be able to define which sectors lost the jobs and we know yeah. Uh, the tourism sector, the entertainment sector is adversely affected yeah. by COVID-19. What that in effect means is that the disposable incomes yeah. for those individuals has been eroded off by mm. COVID-19. Yeah. Companies have shut down. We've seen hotels, Hilton shut down mm. and, and, and uh, Norfolk Hotel, the, the former Norfolk Hotel. Uh, also shut down. Industries, majority of them are struggling. Yeah. We've had a system where we needed to have spurred the economy, mm -hmm. but then with the incentives that we gave, we quickly removed those incentives, and now companies are struggling. Yeah. I think it's only a matter of time that we need to be able to see uh, many more companies getting into a distressed condition and laying off. Yeah. Because COVID, the impact of COVID has not been felt yet. So we have two to three years to be able to see the, 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 imp, the real impact yeah. of COVID-19. So now that pay as you earn and VAT have been restored, were we better off when the pay as you earn was lower, 25% and the VAT 14%? Does it, did it help in any way? It was not an issue of being better off. It was an issue of how do you spur the economy to be able to be vibrant. Yeah. And uh, the whole idea was not to deprive any revenues from the government, but also to be able to have a benefit passed over yeah. to the taxpayer to incentivize them to be able to continue operating. But when you remove those incentives from them, then it means you are actually strangling those institutions yeah. but also the 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 tax the taxpayer who is actually the employer yeah. is stands to lose because as 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 an employee yeah. I'll just have to rationalize how many of those that I need to be able to have in an organization okay L let me bring in uh, Kazutu on this Kazutu can we really tax our way to a stable economy um, no, not really if taxing is always like standing in a bucket and trying to keep yourself from the bucket, um, the, the problem we have to, in Kenya for, for why our economy, economy is not growing, 81% of what we drive our out every year is actually consumption, yeah? private consumption. The government only contributes close to 16% of, uh, um, of, of GDP. Yeah. So whatever policies the government needs to put in place are policies that one should pay uh, private consumption and also increase investment. So if you look at our net investment or net saving for the last five years, it has been negative. That means we are not building any base for future economic growth. And what causes that problem? Uh, there are two things. Number one, untied data. And number two, ignorance to data. What do you mean by untimely data? We are in February and we don't know what the whole GDP. Uh, so any policies they are making right now is yeah. based on wishful thinking. Uh, and that's why the budget policy statement comes out in February, uh, says the economy will most probably grow by 6.6%. Uh, uh, jobs that were created, not probably will be this. Uh, so it's all assumption. By the time we're getting to for 2020 GDP, it's April May. So businesses have operated and the government has operated on policies based on wrong data. 
Yeah, and that's why we keep on giving KRA targets which they will be able, which they are not able to meet. What do I mean by ignorance to data? The structure, the demographic structure of the Kenyan economy is that 19 million people are in, are in the informal sector, and majority of these are in the rural area. So when you do not grow the rural economy and create employment in the rural area, uh, rural unemployment becomes urban unemployment. So you end up having people migrating from the rural areas coming to urban centers. And the urban centers are not able to absorb those people. Then what happens next? You start coming up with affordable housing, um, building expressways, uh, building 10 lanes on thicker roads. What is the point of that? You are trying to cure a symptom uh, of overpopulation in, rural, uh, in urban areas, which is caused by rural unemployment. It is cheaper to fix rural unemployment in the rural areas than try and accommodate everyone in the cities. So if you look at our budget policy statements, when you look at uh, the discussion that professionals have, uh, they're all revolving around big city. You know, we, we need an expressway because to reduce congestion. Congestion is a symptom. What is a symptom? We have a large rural to urban uh, migration. Why? Because we have killed the rural economy. People are now coming to look for jobs which also do not exist in the city. So I think when policymakers cure those two problems, one, well, yes, in timely data, and if you stop ignorance to data, then we start seeing one, our budget deficits will stop uh, increasing because we stop spending on big infrastructure projects which we actually do not need. Yeah. Um, we understand that Kenya is not a capital intensive country, we are a labor intensive country. So yeah. if you can set up a manufacturing plant, you're not going to create 50 jobs, but it's automated. Uh, so we need to think labor-intensive, uh, labor coverage, yeah. uh, that, that, that the quality of output that is coming to labor right now. We need to start from there. That's why you want to widen the tax base. Okay. And stop making 2 million people pay for the rest of the for this something million people in the country. All right. Wema, do you agree with that? Are we basing all our realities on wrong data? The, the data... <coughs> I mean, I, I give it to the technocrats of the national treasury. Yeah. The data is, 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 is spot on, okay? But I think it's, it's the expectations yeah. in what you put to the revenue authority that are a problem with. Let's, I'm a numbers person. Let's just talk numbers. Yeah. Our budget for 2021, 2022 increased by about 120 billion. So it's yeah. just about 3 trillion. So it's 2.96 uh, B, but for easy conversation, three trillion. Yeah. Okay. Our recurrent, just about one point nine seven trillion, so about two trillion, and development about uh, six hundred odd uh, billion. Yeah. Our total government revenue is just about two trillion. Actually, it's one point nine eight. It's about two trillion. It's about uh, sixteen percent of GDP. Yeah. So we have a net deficit of nine thirty seven billion which we are financing through external borrowing and local borrowing, the 345 billion. As an accountant looking at it, you're in the red, you're in receivership, you're in the red, you're in negative. Yeah. Balance it, mm -hmm. you're in the negative, okay? Then you go and say, Kerry, your target is 1.7 trillion, about 14% of GDP. Yeah. Again, numbers. The highest Kerry has ever gotten is 1.33 trillion in collections. Umongezea to 1.7 yeah. trillion. Obviously, then we say <coughs> the way to to fill in that gap is by borrowing. Yeah. Our total debt, about what, seven trillion now. Our ceiling is about uh, nine trillion. trillion. So we are, we are just closely yeah. hitting the ceiling. It's about 60 percent of our GDP. Yeah. Okay, we've been told, so flashback, 2013, our borrowings as a country was 1.8 trillion. 2013, seven years. Okay. Yeah. We're now on seven trillion. That means seven, let's, let's say, two, about five, five trillion. Yeah? yeah. We've been told, and rightly so, because the consumers of the, the custodians of, of, of this information. We're losing two billion a day. Get numbers, 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 context. Yeah. Two billion a day, that's about 730 billion a year. Means over the last eight years, 
We've lost about 5.8 trillion as a government. Yeah. It's almost equal to the increase in our national debt. What does that tell you? We borrowed to steal. <laughs> Do you agree with me with that analogy? <laughs> That's actually a good summary. I, I mean, I don't know if the right word is to say we borrowed to steal, but certainly there are leakages in how um, funds are allocated. Because yeah. I don't think the issue is that Kenyans are not willing to pay tax. And from the numbers that we're hearing is the last, the best collection was 1.3. The current expected collection is 1.6 trillion. Already that's a 23% increment. Yeah. That means, Trevor, your own tax incidence has to be increased by 23% just to be able to make good or even slightly beyond that because the, the number of people that are paying taxes, the people in the formal economy, the people who are active in a formal way are much less than those who are in the informal economy. So you probably end up paying additional taxes either by way of payee or what you consume. Now, on the context of the debt element, yeah. I think it brings to us back to the question you had asked earlier, the expenditure, which is something that we need to not only critically analyze, but also begin to poke holes and ask, why is it this way? 1.2 uh, trillion shillings is going to recurrent expenditure. Yeah. 685 billion is going to development expenditure. This is for the upcoming year. 115 billion is going into pension. So the question is, all these spaces, if you and I are paying more, then why is it that we are not reducing the element of expenditure and where are these leakages coming from? Because the reality is from what the analysis that Mr. Mama is giving is that we should be able to have a balanced budget, but there are leakages. If the leakages are known, why can't they be addressed? What are some of the ways to address them? I honestly think we need to get to a point where each and every single person feels the pain. Like as, actually, as, as I was working it, I met one of your colleagues, Agnes, and I was like, we need to get to a point where I sit to my colleague and I'm like, my colleague, Rudisha Yobkono, tafadhali. Because the moment you extend your hand, mimi, sina chakula, watoto wangu wana chakula. And then the other thing that we need to be cognizant of, we are working in a space and in a structure that has um, a mindset and a spirit that was able to accommodate a Kenya of the 1980s. Yeah. A Kenya that had a less population, a Kenya that required less resources. Today we have a Kenya that has over 50 million people. 75% of these people are 35 and below. Yeah. So the current structures that we have today don't make sense. We are not able to generate the productivity that we need. So in as much as people are saying we need to be taxed more, we also have to ask these expenses, this 1.2 trillion we're paying in terms of um, um, government expenses and salaries, yeah. what are we paying for? And can we demand more from them so that the other people can be able to benefit? Yeah. CP Makori, are we in a situation where we are overburdening the known taxpayers and leaving out those we don't know anything about? Because it's a, it's a, is it a system failure? Because there are many people who are making money, but they're not being taxed at all. So you end up overburdening only the people you know within the tax bracket. I'll not call it a system failure. Yeah. But I'll, I'll, I'll just allude it to being able to map out who our taxpayers are. Yeah. I think what we've used, that as, as rightfully put, is that we've, we've never adjusted our policies to be able to reflect mm -hmm. the current situation. And if we did that proactively, then we'd be able to get into a position where we, we are able to map out all our taxpayers. I mean, we have 19 million, 17 million Kenyans who have IDs. A lot of them uh, are, are supposedly going, supposed to vote yeah. at any general election. But when you look at the tax, in terms of tax filing, we only have 3.8 million Kenyans who are filing taxes. We could move a bit of youth from this and say 7 million. So we have 10 million who are potential taxpayers. Yeah. The revenue administration should be in such a way that it's able to tap into that particular tax base. Yeah. How I look at it is just being able to, from a simple math, and if, if, if we were to take it uh, to the Juakali people, yeah. Ask them to pay 20 shillings a day. They're told there are 12 million of them. So yeah. if by 20 shillings is 240 million. And if you exploit that just in a month, uh, 
you are on 7.2 billion. So exploit that to 12 months, and you can see the amount of money that KRA can just be able to collect. Yeah. The challenge that we have is effective administration of tax collection. Okay. We've never looked at our tax base and asked ourselves, what modalities do we put in place to be able to collect the taxes? Yeah. We've just had this conventional formal uh, taxpayers who are around 3.8, and that is where we concentrate, yeah. you know, concentrate on. We need to be able to expand this to be able to bring in and net, bring to the net and expand the tax base. Yeah. It's, it's usually a very painful or uh, tedious process, but eventually it pays off. Okay. You, you want to jump in on this one? Yes. Yeah. I, I think, it's a challenge, I think, to the Revenue Authority for that. And, and as Makori is talking about expanding the tax base, yeah. I, I'm thinking, I think it's high time, you know, and, and, and let's go back to basics. We are very rudimental as human beings. Mm. Yeah. If, if you have a villager from my village uh, in Kanama as a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a tax officer and he's the one doing tax education for me, I connect, I relate. If I have uh, an Omondi yeah. from Dala as a, a, a commissioner, yeah. I relate because um, uh, he is one of me. If you have a Nyandusi out of uh, uh, Kisi, yeah. again, I relate. If I look at, 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 the, at our composition of the Revenue Authority, and it's just hipping now, one of the largest drivers of this economy is the Asian community. Yeah. In my practice of tax, and I've slightly over two decades of doing this, I've not met an Asian tax officer, be it at uh, since a commissioner level, so how then do you incentivize that community to come to the table? Yeah. So that's a different uh, mindset. Because if we still go through back to old ways of doing things, yeah. strengthen the audit for carry, enhance debt collection prog program on, on ITAX, uh, co increase compliance reviews, uh, the ADR process has worked well, strengthen more, fast track matters in appeals. But if a whole lot of uh, industry, that community, that you haven't even enticed them. Yeah. Because you have to make them, the, I, I love the credo that, uh, that was there when Kibaki came into place and we were all very Kenyan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Kulipo Shuri Kujitakemea. And we are proud to be Kenyans. Yeah. How do we incentivize and get those people in the net? How do we get across the counties? Yeah. Are the Marikitis, Kikomba, doing a uh, bail, yeah. Mari Kwa Mari, okay? Across uh, into, in, into the villages during when we've got a market day. On a Thursday, yeah. there's a market uh, called Kibutu where they, they sell cows and all that. And they're all very diligent paying the county government. So already we've got that data. Mm -hmm. So how then do we integrate data out of the county government, the kanjo yeah. of, of the machinani into mm. the, the national system. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's the one thing we, we just need to have a different mindset on how to get to the guys at the bottom of the pyramid and have a simplified system yeah. whereby pay a, a, a nominal amount, yeah. 100 bob per god, as you, as you, as you said, simplicity. And then get them into the system. Yeah. And only then will we be able to address what Macron is saying, yeah. the bigger pie of, of increasing people coming into yeah. the tax net. All right. Reginald, I think one of the other issues that, yeah. uh, uh, as I was listening to Momo speaking, yeah. is that we need to be able to break the trust deficit. Exactly. Mm. What that simply means is that uh, I need to see where my taxes go. Yeah. When I pay my tax, I need just to be able to be told this year we had 200 shillings collected, 100 shillings were spent in building a road. Yeah. 
20 shillings, I can actually see it in my local village that it improved my road uh, at home. Yeah. Uh, five shillings went to a school and it bought something. And that is when we'll be able to have, to bring more people on board and have the tax base increase. Yeah. Sorry, just before you go back to Reginald, I, I hear us talking about the element of tax. Yeah. We are running a country that has a deficit and therefore is increasing the tax burden on the Kenyan populace. That's granted. Yeah. But then there's a bigger issue of the leakage. Where is this money going? I like that my peers are saying there are people who are at Gikomba. Those are people who at 4 in the morning work at Kwasoko, yeah. right? And they work it through all the way to 10 in the evening. Yeah. Then it takes them probably another hour or however many hours to get home. They're not resting. If you walk in town like today on your way here, in town, city center, 5 o'clock, because the hustle is real. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you feel that pain. And I run a business and I have a lot of, it, carry it communicates with me. Yeah. Your tax is due. You know, I get that communication. There's an important and pertinent thing that we have to address here. The expenditure. Is the government or the people who are working with the government or the thousands of people who are representing the government, are they waking up at the same hour? Are they actually accounting for each and every single shilling that yeah. is being expended? You know, when we say we are paying 1.2 trillion in, uh, uh, for government services to employees, recurrent expenditure, yeah. the people who have to be paid, they have to be taken care of, the offices and the spaces. Am I, as a Kenyan, the person at Gikomba, when I walk in and I ask for a service, am I getting the service in the way that it should be, mm. right? The second thing, when we say we are paying about 115 billion in pension, who is being paid this pension? Right? When we say we are paying over about 500 billion in terms of interest payments for debt, yeah. we can't question it because those are already commitments that are made. But when we also come back and we say we are paying over 600 billion in development expenditure, it's good to have a road. But even the same government and the same exchequer and the same executive office needs to sit down and say, yeah. what can we do and what are the best decisions? Yeah. Let's not dwell on the past, but we can't keep accruing and saying we're going to pay. So if you're going to increase my incidence mm -hmm. by 20 to 50% depending, why can't you reduce your own expenditure by that same margin? Why can't you forestall or review, and we have been seeing the government reviewing its um, debt obligations, yeah. because it needs to be two-way. Otherwise, the element of the trust coefficient is it's going to be Just lost, and at some point, I'll be like, we'll all start looking for loopholes yeah. to get around it. Uh, Reginald, let me bring you back into this. You're the one who started this conversation around the expanding this taxpayer's pie. There's a new initiative now called the, the minimum tax, supposed to take effect from the 1st of January 2021, and Mwema alluded to this. The tax shall be applicable at 1% of the gross turnover and shall be remitted on a quarterly basis. We know that these people who you say are working but may not be remitting their taxes could fall under this, right? Is it the minimum tax a solution to this? Okay, I, I, I think the, the main thing to try and avoid creative accounting. Yeah, uh, where I get my tenor, I get my creative accounting, I end up at a loss and I don't pay my taxation. There are some businesses that have been uh, running in profit but always report losses uh, to avoid to pay uh, taxation. So if you have a minimum tax based on um, your turnover, uh, then I, I know most people will start also looking for innovative ways of under-reporting uh, their, their, their turnover to try and make sure that they do not pay um, the, the minimum tax. But the, the reality that we have um, on, on, on the ground, Trevor, is number one, we are highly indebted. And there are only three ways you can sort out your debt. Either you tax people so that you can pay your debt, uh, secondly, you borrow more, um, every Kenyan is doing this too. And thirdly, you just have to pay one pay. Yeah? So, uh, like what Argentina and Zambia did. The point is, you can't take people anymore, they just default on, um, on, on this thing. But, but the base of the problem that we have um, in, in, in the country, Trevor, even if you want to, to tax the people in the informal sector, is economics is a very tricky affair. If you tax those people in the informal sector, uh, one thing for sure, you will kill the informal sector. The reason why it's called informal sector is because they don't pay taxes. Once they start paying taxes, uh, you realize, one, the goods that they sell increase in price. So uh, that mandazi you are buying at 30 bob now becomes 50 bob. All of a sudden, people can't afford it. Yeah? So that's, uh, you kill that person's business by making them pay the 20 shillings or 100 shillings a day. The next question, uh, that person will be asking, okay, you want to charge me 100 shillings on my goods. What have you done for me 
for this goat to reach this point to the market, you have not raised it, you have not done anything for me to be able to bring the goat to the market, so why are you charging me uh, taxation? But the base of the matter is, is called poverty and unemployment. So yes, we can have economy growing 5%, 6%, but if it's worth creating jobs, the tax base will not increase. Yeah? And that's why I can't turn going back to, if you cannot cure rural unemployment, which increases income, and then you're not going to cure the tax issue uh, by having elitist conversations on, oh, let's improve this, let's make it easier for them. Because the purpose of taxation is threefold. Number one, to generate revenue. Uh, number two, to stop uh, bad behavior. Um, and, and number three, to direct resources to the most productive areas of uh, the economy. Our taxation in this country only does one thing, to generate revenue. So if it's to generate revenue, uh, the, the, the law on taxation is that it has to be simple and it has to be effective. The cost of collecting that 20 shillings cannot be more than 20 shillings, but then it defeats the purpose of collecting the 20 shillings. So there are a lot of intricacies that go uh, hand in hand with this, because one action will create for you a ripple action uh, somewhere else. So you might say you collected 20 shillings here, but you have killed demand on the other side, and you, are, you have a zero-sum game. What Kenya needs to do um, to, to get out of this economic mess that we are, number one, is to first admit and agree we are a very small economy. With only 2 million people in the formal sector, uh, and 17 million in the informal sector, and 70% of those in the informal sector are in the rural area. So if you come and open your business in Nairobi and you say, ah, there's no demand, that is what they call ignorance to data. Because of the informal sector, most of them are not found in Nairobi, they are found in the rural area. In the agricultural sector, which the tax man says, is very difficult to tax. Yeah? So how then do we make sure that we move from raw production, move yeah. into value addition, where you can easily tax. Yeah. yeah. Where you can easily say, okay, now it's now hunger. We made this number of tons of hunger, we can tax that hunger. Yeah. So uh, apart from admitting that number one, we are a small economy, and start making decisions and policies based on that fact that we are a small economy. Number two, we yeah. are an agrarian economy. Yeah. And if you look at the budget allocation, even the one for 2021, 2022, agriculture gets the list at 70 billion. Number one, so that is so is military expenditure. Yeah. Number two is police and uh, judiciary. And number three is education and in education of the second billion in education, four hundred and eighty seven is in recurrent, uh, that is paying teachers. Yeah. And number four is counties, number five is paying debt. Okay. Um, not in any particular order, I'm actually paying it to become number one. All That's right. where your tax are going. So okay. what is your allocation of uh, resources? Why? Because we refuse to admit that we are a small economy, which is an agrarian economy, and make policies that actually address the structure of the Kenyan economy. All right. Mwema, you're the one who started this conversation. Will this help in any way? You know, KRA's argument is that when we have this minimum tax, then it might even cushion them from borrowing more. One of the canon rules of taxation is equity. And I pose a question. Is this tax really equitable? It is extremely punitive for companies which have recently been incorporated. They're in their early stages of trading and they're penetrating the market. Making losses is not criminal. And what you talked about, that minimum taxes, it's about entities that have done it's creative created. accounting and, yeah. and created losses over the years. That is why you've got an audit function within KRA to do that. That is why within the ITEX platform, you apply tools and analysis and pick up exceptions. Are we saying that has failed? So that now you have this blanket way yeah. of just saying, let's do minimum tax and, and tax everyone. It's, it's, it's for lack of a better word, just, mm -hmm. let's just tax everyone yeah. in, in terms of the minimum tax. That's fundamental for me, I think. Um, and then when you make a loss, it's a property under our constitution. Yeah. You're then depriving me the property that I have as a business, so I can do making further losses. I don't make the loss. Nobody begins a business with the intention of making losses. Yeah. So I 
personally think minimum tax is not an equitable tax. Flipping it in terms of expenditure, and we talked about expenditure, we've always talked about the low absorption capacity within the 47 counties. Mm. Maybe the question is, did we embrace devolution too early? Creating 47 presidents in 2010? Should we go back and maybe, yeah. you know, we had the eight provinces that moved into the 47. Maybe now that you're talking BPI, should we cure the 47 counties and shrink them into 20 counties? Mm. That's, 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 that's a question now we bodily and, and despite if, if we are to rise above emotions and think objectively, yeah. the counties could not absorb the, 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 the shock of the money coming in from the national government. So we've got a low absorption capacity at the county level. Yeah. The 47 counties, in my humble view, and again, I'm a numbers person, I only understand numbers. I think we adopted 47 too early. Okay. And maybe BPI should have, will be looking at reducing this to 20 or 25. <laughs> All right. Yeah, Makori. Maybe just to add, and, 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 and remember, if, if you remember, you must have alluded to it. Yeah. I think the question you asked, Trevor, is minimum tax, is it going to enhance revenue for carry? Yeah. My quick take, the answer will be no at the moment. Okay. The reason being, first, as a law, it is, as the minimum tax law that was enacted, yeah. it does not define, clearly define what gross turnover is. There's no way in the tax laws where we know what gross turnover means. Yeah. So there's likelihood of misinterpretation of what that means. And even me as a, as a business person, I can't define what cross turnover should be for me to be able to pay the, the, the minimum tax. Yeah. Two, you, it's tax on tax because the gross turnover has VAT in it, excess duty in it, and therefore what it's saying that you're, you're just taxing on other tax. Yeah. What still for that is that I've not removed my expenses from the business. So what did that mean? The, essentially what it means is that I've paid you off, but I've not recovered back my costs yeah. of running that business. So in effect, I'll have to be able to evaluate that business and say, is it really profitable to continue running this business? Yeah. There's anticipation of companies closing down because minimum tax will have eaten into their profits completely. It will have eroded that. Yet the noble idea of having the minimum tax yeah. was just to be able to target those companies that are in perpetual loss. Mama said it rightly. Yeah. KRA has the systems to be able to monitor this. When you start over a company at the, at the beginning, you don't expect to make profits. Yeah. The capital investment might be higher than the, the returns that you're getting initially. And that is why companies are given between four to five years yeah. to turn around. There are other benefits that have actually been removed out from, from companies from the income tax itself in terms of the uh, capital deductions that they need to be, to be able to get, yeah. which used to help the companies spur themselves into profitability. At the end of your five, you still continue making profits, then that should be evaluated by the revenue administrators to be yeah. able to determine is it the correct position. Mm -hmm. At that point, you can impose the minimum tax. Yeah. What it is right now is that everyone uh, is what we call collateral damage yeah. has actually been put in <laughs> to be able to <laughs> suffer with those who are making losses. Yeah. So even the good taxpayers now have to be able to critically uh, look at their businesses and say, is it sustainable to be able to continue that business? Okay. 
I have to take a quick break. I'll come back to you and be there on this All issue right. of minimum tax. We'll be back in just a bit. I see a lot of your feedback coming through here. We'll read some of them in just a bit. And I see Odoyo Makoremo saying, Trevor, what you guys are discussing this morning does not make sense to me. Well, you will. When the tax hit you, you will understand. For now, we will come back in just a bit and read a bit more. All right.